Good morning, this is Kyle Viola coming at you with another video. Jesus and coffee. Usually it's coffee and Jesus, but now I got a cup from my precious friend from church. Jesus and coffee today. Here we go. Mm, that's some good coffee. All right, so what's on my heart today? It, I've been led to this uh, the, just revelation that God reveals to us. So first scripture that came to mind is in Proverbs 25. I just lost the place. All right, here it is. So t Proverbs 25, 2 is this. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. So God conceals knowledge, conceals the treasures of heaven, conceals mysteries. But Paul goes on to say, actually, that he's been given the mysteries of Christ and much more of what's hidden in Christ has been revealed through Paul's letters to the New Testament. Even Jesus even told his disciples, you know, I speak to you truth but that you do not understand yet, but one day you will understand. So even truth is, is revealed or given, but the information and the unveiling of that revelation doesn't come until later. But God does the unveiling. God does the revealing. So Paul actually talks about um, revealing secrets. And so it's foolish to the world. And this is what I've been meditating on is how everything in the kingdom of God opposes everything that the world teaches. So the world, for example, teaches like hard work. Um, and to be successful, you have to really put the work in, right? Well, what if God actually promotes you like he did with King David? Now, now King David stepped in faith, but God was the one that made him king. God actually has plans for us before we're even born. But the world says, oh, you have to carve out your own destiny, but God may already have destiny for you. You see the ideas of, of God and the biblical understanding of what God intends is always opposite always flipped around from what the world and the direction of the world tries to push. The world is very pushy, actually. God is not pushy, but he does the unveiling of revelation. So here's what Paul actually talked about in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. In uh, verse 21, For in his wisdom, God designed that all the world's wisdom would be insufficient to lead people to the discovery of himself. He took great delight in baffling the wisdom of the world by using the simplicity of preaching the story of the cross in order to save those who believe it. For the Jews constantly demand to see miraculous signs, while those who are not Jews constantly cling to the world's wisdom. But we preach the crucified Messiah. The Jews stumble over him, and the rest of the world sees him as foolishness. Doesn't the world see Jesus as foolish? Even God knew this from the beginning. But for those who have been chosen to, to follow him, both Jews and Greeks, he is God's mighty power. Jesus is our mighty power for God's wi true wisdom and our Messiah. For the foolish things of God have proven to be wiser than human wisdom. And the feeble things of God have proven to be far more powerful than any human ability. So I'll skip to chapter 2. It says this, my brothers and sisters, when I first came to proclaim to you the secrets of God, I refused to come as an expert trying to impress you with my eloquent speech and lofty wisdom. For while I was with you, I was determined to be consumed with one topic, Jesus, the crucified Messiah. I stood before you feeling inadequate. So Paul has all the mysteries of Christ unveiled to him, but he is even feeling inadequate. Filled with reverence for God and trembling under the sense of the importance of my words. The message I preached and how I preached it was not an attempt to sway you with persuasive arguments, but to prove to you the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit. For God intended that your faith not be established in man's wisdom, but by trusting in his almighty power. So it's not by our ability, it's not by our for forcing and pushing and manipulating or eloquent speech and charisma. It's by God's mighty power, by his spirit, that we are unveiled the secrets of the kingdom that God leads us and reveals all truth to us. We are led to truth by the spirit of God. So wisdom from God. However, there's a wisdom that we continually speak of when we are among the spiritually mature. It's wisdom that didn't originate in this present age. 
nor did it come from the rulers of this age who are in the process of being dethroned. Instead, we continually speak of this wonderful wisdom that comes from God, hidden before now in a mystery. It is his secret plan, again, secrets, God has secrets, destined before the ages to bring us into glory. None of the rulers of this present world order understood it. For if they had, they never would have crucified the Lord of shining glory. So if people discern the truth, if people discern God's plans and God's wisdom, they would never have crucified Jesus in the first place. But God has his, has his secrets. He let Jesus be crucified. Now, what people think at the time, they even judge what was going on to Jesus. They think that Jesus was being crucified, so he's weak. He, but Jesus said, I give my life willingly. It was for the salvation of all humanity. And that was the wisdom of God at work. So this is why the scriptures say, Paul says, things never discovered or heard before, things beyond our ability to imagine, they, these are the many things God has in store for all his lovers. But God now unveils these profound realities to us by the Spirit. So God reveals spirit, uh, mysteries by his Spirit. God reveals secrets by his Spirit. Yes, he has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit, who constantly explores all things. After all, who can really see into a person's heart and know his hidden impulses except for that person's spirit? So is it with God. His thoughts and secrets are only fully understood by his spirit, the spirit of God. So, as he, <laughs> continuing, for we did not receive the spirit of this world system, but the spirit of God, so that we might come to understand and experience all that grace has lavished upon us. And we articulate these realities with the words imparted to us by the Spirit, and not with the words taught by human wisdom. We join together Spirit-revealed truths with Spirit-revealed words. Someone living on an entirely human level rejects the revelations of God's Spirit, for they make no sense to him. He can't understand the revelations of the Spirit because they are only discovered by the illumination of the Spirit. Those who live in the Spirit are able to carefully evaluate all things, and they are subject to the scrutiny of no one but God. You can actually not be judged by any man or man or woman on this earth if they are operating on a, a carnal, human, natural level. Things must be spiritually discerned and even spiritually judged. So you cannot be judged by anyone but God and by the counsel of the Spirit, if somebody speaks from the Spirit. For who has ever intimately known the mind of the Lord Yahweh well enough to become his counselor? Christ has, and we possess the mind of Christ. So, now, going backwards into um, Luke, talking about Jesus, this is interesting. I always thought this is, I love the word because it flips everything upside down. And there's always correction with the disciples, with the people following Jesus. He says this, the people brought, this is in Luke 18, 15. The people brought their babies and small children to Jesus so that he might lay his hands on them to bless them. When the disciples saw this, they scolded the parents and told them to stop troubling the master. So disciples are like, oh, Jesus is too holy for you parents to be coming with your children. But Jesus called for the parents, the children, and his disciples to come and listen to him. He said, never hinder a child from coming to me. Let them all come, for God's kingdom belongs to them. They demonstrate to you what faith is all about. Learn this well. Unless you receive the revelation of the kingdom the same way a little child receives it, you will never be able to enter in. So Jesus says, learn from the children, for the children belong the kingdom. We have to be childlike. We actually have to learn from children the innocence of receiving the revelation of God's kingdom like a child, childlike faith. Going down to Luke 9, verse 46. I thought this was interesting. Again, it's a flip. The disciples began to argue. People are always arguing about things, right? Trying to figure out what doctrine or whatever they believe in, whatever opinions. Becoming preoccupied over who would be the greatest one among them, fully aware of their inmost thoughts. So Jesus knows our thoughts. 
Jesus called a little child to his side and said to them, If you tenderly care for this little child on my behalf, you are tenderly caring for me. And if you care for me, you are honoring my Father who sent me. For the one who is least important in your eyes is actually the most important one of all. Another part, Jesus says, the, last, uh, the first will be last and the last will be first. Jesus always flipped everything upside down, but right side up. And he's saying the least, who you think is least now, is going to be greatest then. So I even think of a janitor. A janitor is the one who stays overnight and cleans everything, but he's not given the same status of honor and respect. But tangibly, he's making a difference in that school where kids can come in a clean environment because a janitor had a part in all that. That's not just something that comes to mind. So here in Matthew 13, Jesus actually talks about revelation. He says this in Matthew 13, after the parable of the seeds, in verse 11, he, ex he explained, You've been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden truths and mysteries of the realm of heaven's kingdom, but they have not. For everyone who listens with an open heart will receive progressively more revelation until he has more than enough. But those who don't listen with an open, teachable heart, even the understanding that they think they have will be taken from them. That's why I teach the people using parables, because they think they're looking for truth. Yet because their hearts are unteachable, they never discover it. Although they will listen to me, they never fully perceive the message I speak. The prophecy of Isaiah describes them perfectly. Although they listen carefully to everything I speak, they don't understand a thing I say. They look and pretend to see, but the eyes of their hearts are closed. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. Their eyes are plugged and are hard of hearing, and they have deliberately shut their eyes to their truth. To the truth, otherwise they would open their eyes to see, and open their ears to hear, and open their minds to understand. Then they would turn to me, and be healed. So, if turning to Jesus is a healing, but we have to open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears to what the Spirit is saying, because it's by the Spirit that truth is revealed by the words that Jesus speaks. Your eyes are privileged, for they see. Delighted are your ears, for they are open to hear all these things. Many prophets and godly people in times past yearn to see these days of miracles that you've been favored to see. They would have given everything to hear the revelation you've been favored to hear, yet they didn't get to see as much as a glimpse or hear even a whisper. So essentially what I'm trying to get across is that it's a privilege that we have the Holy Spirit now. The Holy Spirit is given to us that's gonna, uh, that wants to unveil truth to us. And everything that is hidden in the dark will be brought to light. Which the Lord was actually highlighting to me um, today as well. In Luke 11 or 12, 12, 11 or something. Okay. It says this. Um, hold on. 12, 2. Never mind. Essentially, the Lord reveals revelation to us and that whatever is hidden in the dark will be revealed by his light. And so just come to the light, come to Jesus and let him reveal truth to you. So I hope this encourages you. God bless you. And I will see you next time. Peace.